Fantastic. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Round two, Dr. Rawls. We're right back at it. Uh, this is an additional bonus uh, piece, if you will. And I'm really excited to get into the, the, the weeds with you with regards to, uh, I think most importantly, brother, the, the idea of youth culture pedagogy and really explicitly how are some of our practitioners going to try to attempt to do this, uh, make this happen in their classrooms? Well, the first thing that needs to happen is um, it's a, this th to, to really jump into this and do this the way you should. It requires a mindset shift. Okay. Um, I recently did a TED talk that talks about this thing that we call a hip hop mentality. Can't wait to watch it. A hip hop mentality. So let me let me just preface this um this is something that i could talk about for 20 30 minutes but i'm going to break it down in two okay um the pioneers of hip-hop when you think of these people that created hip-hop these were young people nobody probably over the age of 20 21 22 right so we're talking teenagers young adults that created something that would eventually become a billion dollar industry right how'd they do it that's the question is always the how right so how did they do that well they did it with this idea of we've got limited resources limited funds and high debt right and you've got people telling you no you can't do it no you this won't work that won't work it won't it won't work everybody's a naysayer and so these young people who um, were black and brown and in the Bronx, New York. Um, they wanted to party like other people, but they couldn't get into a club like the, the fancy clubs, like a Studio 54 or what have you. So they create their own right. in, a, in a rec center or out in a park, right? So it's like, we told you, no, you can't do it this way. So we do it this way. We'll create another way. Um, they're they're told no you can't get into you know the finest dance places you can't you know this dancing that you're doing is not this is not dancing this is not real you know it's not ballet it's not whatever right. so they look and they see refrigerator cardboard sitting out at the garbage right and so they take that break it apart tape it down and repurpose it now we've got a dance floor that's what's up Right. It's it's this idea of this this aerosol art or whatever you're spraying here on. This is this is not art. This is garbage. This is trash. You shouldn't be doing this. This is young people saying, you know what, we're going to do it and we're going to put it on trains so that the whole city sees it. We're going to we're going to take um, a spray paint can and repurpose the nozzle so it works for what we're doing. That's a hip hop mentality. A hip hop mentality is when somebody tells you no, when somebody tells you you can't do it, you figure out a way. It's taking um, innovations. It's using innovative ideas and ways and means to create something from nothing. Right. And that's what hip hop did, right? Grandmaster Cass says that hip hop didn't invent anything. It reinvented everything. Okay. And that's the thing about hip hop that makes it special. So what we're telling educators is same mindset. In our schools, we got low funds, mm -hmm. low resources. Limited low, access. You, you feeling me? Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of people telling us, no, don't do it this way. It doesn't work that way. Don't do that. We hear a lot of no, 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 no. See the parallels? Absolutely. Absolutely. See where I'm going with it? And so what we're telling educators is you, you've got to change your, your thinking. And this isn't a, a black or white thing. That's 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 what I need educators. I have so many educators tell me I can't do hip hop. I listen to country. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Sure. We hear so many. I can't. And I look at them and I tell them. We're not asking you to go into the classroom and, and bust a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking you to sit in the classroom and start beatboxing. Absolutely. Here's what you got to understand. The youth, the young people are the experts on this. Right. So you let them lead. You let them kind of show you the way. You let them teach you. And 
the thing about it, when you talk about hip hop and then move it over even to youth culture, that's the same mindset with everything. And I like to give the example, and I may have gave, given it on the last podcast, I can't remember, but um, like, for instance, I've had students in my classroom that are into skateboarding. Absolutely, yes. Now, yeah. I'm an I'm a almost 50-year-old man. <laughs> I'm, I'm not skateboarding for anybody. Right. No business on a skateboard. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm good. Right. But I let my students teach me about it. We have conversations. Tell me about this thing you're into. I'm not good at it. Tell me about it. So now my students are teaching me and they're loving that. Oh, Mr. Rawls, guess what? So this is what you do when you do this and, and Ollie this and all that. And I'm like, uh, and they're teaching me. And yeah. so now they feel like I'm listening to them. They start to build a trust with me. They start to, they start to kind of build this connection with me. And so now when we're having conversations, there's more of a mutual trust. And so now when I'm trying to teach them something in gym class, or I'm trying to teach them something about health, they'll be more apt to listen to me because they know I listen to them. So I That's recall cool. in, in, in our conversation previously uh, that you explained to me, um, you had a deliberate kind of intentional, uh, I think you said somewhere between three and five minutes when you came into the class and you said, what's up? You kind of had everybody in a gathered, intentional manner. In a cipher. Said, Usually in a cipher. I put them in a cipher. Definitely. Go ahead. Tell, tell us about that. So a cipher comes from hip hop. If you ever watch um, um, like a hip hop battle, you'll see like rappers all in a circle. Sir. Cipher is a circle. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and the reason for that, and if you ever watch B-Boys, you know, you'll see that similar concept. Absolutely. A cipher is a circle because in a circle, there's nobody that's at the head. Everybody's equal. Right. The difference in a in a modern classroom dynamic, the teacher's always at the front, at the head of the class. So when you walk in, you look, you can see who's in charge. And a cipher, students have that feeling of equality and you can have a conversation and, and they might even feel like that you're on their level. Sometimes when I'm in the classroom talking to students and I'm not able to put the classroom in a cipher, I'll sit at a desk or sit at a chair and just turn it around and, and I'll sit with them. So I'm not above them, mm -hmm. but I'm not up here. So ment mentally and psychologically, I'm not up here. I'm with you. We're having conversations and, and I'm looking you straight in the eye rather than I'm looking down on you. So that's what that cipher mentality is. So that's so that's the beginning of deliberate practice for our practitioners. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of a, a, a way to enter or a way to 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 set up the classroom. Right. As we're going through the subject matter for the day, we'll, we'll just say it's in physical education class. As mm -hmm. we're going through the subject matter for the day, how do we retain these ideals uh, and, and really pragmatically address uh methodologies of, of using this tactic so one of the most important things is the first few weeks of your classroom mm -hmm. all of this is um comes from structures and routines mm -hmm. and so when people when i tell people that they're like uh, what you have to have structure huh what yes you need structure you need routines i'm not saying take that stuff away you need that you have to build a routine you've got to you have to teach young people how to do this, right? right? This isn't what I'm not, what I'm telling you doesn't happen in a day and it doesn't happen automatically. And you're always going to have outliers. You're going to have students that this may not work with. So you've got to think of something else, but that's part of the, the hip hop mentality is, you know, it worked for, for 27 of my 30 students. There's three that it's not working with. So now I've got to find out what's going on with those three. So that that that's interesting because because when you take your mindset that you mentioned earlier with regards to um, innovation ingenuity with with the hip hop mindset and you look at this this new problem of I've got this tiny portion of my students that I still want to reach mm -hmm. how are our practitioners now going to augment this this uh, practice to intentionally reach those those other students. So it is called a hip hop, a hip hop mentality. And the way to do it is you've got to, you, you still got to figure out what connects with those students, because let's be honest, not every student is a hip hop head. Right. And, but, you know, they walk in and you see, they might have a, a Taylor Swifty bag or whatever. Right. Yeah. And now you're like, Hmm, that person might be a Swifty. 
Yeah. So now you've got to use that to your advantage. You may not have ever listened to a Taylor Swift song. You may not know anything about Taylor Swift, but guess what? You need to have a conversation with that student and ask about that. Right. So I see you got that bag. Did you go to the concert? I heard it was kind of great. You got tickets? How did you do it? Right. Your mom got them? So you guys stood in line for how long? Really? Right, Tell right. me more. And, and what, how was the concert? Tell me, what was it like? What do you like about Taylor? Tell, right? And so you're getting into this student and you're finally finding this student, um, finding out what this student likes. And the thing about it is, um, and this comes from different differentiated instruction, nothing, it's, it's not, we're not taking away from things that you've learned, we're adding to them, right? right? So differentiated instruction tells us that we've got to differentiate for each student. This is no different, right? So that Swifty student may not be into, you know, the hip hop things that some of your other students are into. So you find out about that student and you use that to get to know that student. It's all about building relationships. The bottom line is this idea of relational pedagogy. Right. And that's from Alexander Sadorkin, which talks about um, building relationships with students in order to educate them. So you you, you just mentioned uh, relational pedagogy. Um, last time we were together, we did not get an opportunity to mention your book. Would you please give us the title of that and, and, and give us some details? Yeah, I got a couple books, but let's start with the first one, Youth Culture Pedagogy, um, Youth Culture Power, sorry, Youth Culture Power, written by uh, myself and John Robinson, which outlines our ideas about um, using youth culture to help um, basically build teacher-student relationships, because that's the most important thing in, in my mind. At least when I was teaching, that's what worked, yes. right? I built those teacher-student relationships, and then I noticed that my student engagement began to increase. Right. I noticed that students began to actually care and want to be in my classroom. And so um, I was using hip hop, but I was doing more than that. I, it was sometimes it was, you know, it was whatever the student was into. I was I was genuinely yeah. interested, and I was I was interested. Why do you like anime so much? It doesn't move me, but why does it, What? tell me about it, yeah. really. And the students are talking about Gokachu and Chukugu and Blue 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 and whoever these names are, right. and they're really into it. And yeah. so if they get to teach you about it, right? Imagine if they can teach you about something, that means they can learn, Right. that means they can learn. So when you do that, you, you pull out something from them and that helps you in the classroom as an educator. So I'm, I'm hearing uh, more of a teaching framework than a curricular model because it fits on top of everything, right? Definitely. It's and, definitely a framework. And and it, and it, I mean, we, can, we can't just stop with one book, Brother Rawls. Come on. Hit, hit, hit. I know you got another one back there, man. <laughs> we got another one, but this is the one that they're going to need, right? So this one is called How Can I Move the Crowd? Yeah. And in this book, you know, teachers always want, this is every time we did a professional development, because we do professional developments for teachers um, all over the, the country. We, we've taken uh, Brooklyn to Kentucky, to Atlanta, to everywhere, where we'll go down and actually um, give teachers some of these concepts and put it in their laps. And so teachers always ask us, how can we do this? And so we tell them that teaching is a performance, right? So if you if you have an audience, you got to move the crowd, right? A la Rakim, you've got to move the crowd. So this book is called How Can I Move the Crowd? A Classroom Activity Handbook. And we give 22 um, ideas to help teachers move the crowd or reach their students. Because here's the thing, you've got to get to know your students, right? And you've got it. And this is a constant thing. You don't just do it at the first two weeks of school and then that's it. This is something you pull out every once in a while, just because, and here's the thing. I know this used to always happen to me. Every few weeks, you're going to get a new student. <laughs> sure, sure. Right? The reality of it. You, you've got it. You've got to constantly keep updating, keep getting to know your students. And so we have different things. Um, one of the things we have in here, we have a thing called um, um, the hashtag games. Okay. So our students speak hashtag they speak meme right think of your students they 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 speak emoji yes so if you're in a, a class even if you don't here's the cool thing even if you don't they do so what we like to do is uh especially in the first week or so we tell the students um 
First of all, I don't make them put up their phones. If I'm not more engaging than the phone, then that's me. I lost them. I got to be more engaging. I so I never had to tell them to put away their phone. I had their attention. Right. So the thing about these students is they live on their phones, mm -hmm. right? So you can take something like Instagram, right? And you can maybe even put up a picture or you can send out a picture. Yep. Get all your students text messages or their, their numbers and text a picture. And you tell them hashtag what this picture means. Yes. So you can put up a picture of something and have the students hashtag it. And yes. it can the way you start out is you start with them. Remember, we they always say start at the student. Yep. Nothing changes. This is a pedagogy. You just move on top of that. So let's start with what the students are into. So you might start with uh, a Taylor Swift or this. Right now, Barbie is the big thing, right? You got kids. You start with the Barbie thing and hashtag this. And you'll get some kids to say hashtag Barbie, hashtag great. You'll get some kids to say hashtag stupid, hashtag <laughs> pink. You're going to get all these different answers and responses. This tells you a little bit about your kids. Right. Letting you know, okay, these kids right here, this little section, they go into Barbie on the first day it comes out. Right. This little section right here, they could care less, uh -huh. right? So now you're getting, so then maybe you'll put in um, a, a picture of, you know, some sports athlete. We get, I mean, we could pick Steph Curry, anybody, right? Put in Steph Curry and you might get hashtag hole in one. You might get hashtag this, hashtag, right? So right. you're going to find out about your students and, and get to learn them. And, these, and then you can, this is something that you can do all the time. So now they're used to doing that, right? You keep doing that over the few weeks, and now you're ready to introduce a concept. Let's say we're talking about the French Revolution, and we put up hashtag, you know, we've put up a picture of, like, maybe, say, uh, a guillotine. Yeah. What is that? Hashtag, I don't know. Hashtag, what's this? Ha you see what I'm saying? Now we've got... Not the fingers. <laughs> uh -huh. Now we can have some conversation. Yes. You can even start with Napoleon. Put up a picture of Napoleon or something just to see... Get a get a quick picture of where they are. You get a quick sense of the room. Like, okay, half of my students know who Napoleon. The other half don't know. They've never right. heard. Of it. Now I know where to start. Now but I least, know who they are. But at least you're bringing them that question. Uh, what some what some folks call entry slips in a manner that appeals to them, rather than you forcing uh, something from your culture Got onto it. them and saying yeah. this is how you're going to do it. And you can feel whatever way about it that you want, but this I'm telling you how it's about to happen. And and we give you plenty of ideas to, to get started with this. And then the, the whole key to this, that's why there's only 22, because the whole idea is you heard of the parable, teach a teach a man, uh give a man a fish, he eats for one day. You teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Absolutely. So our idea is that's why we do professional developments. We teach you how to have this mindset to think like this then you can keep doing it and you can create new ways. That's the that's the smart way to do this. Because here's the thing, I can't tell you how your class is going to be. Of course. Right? And every generation, you know what? Even every class period. Yeah. Right? They, these kids are different. Completely different dynamic. Completely different dynamics. So you, your first period and your seventh period are two different classes. Absolutely. You're like, how are y'all in the same school? Who, who are you? <laughs> right? And so you have to, this is something you have to figure out as a teacher. Right. And I always get teachers saying, oh, I can't do, I can't figure, I can't. Who do I ask, Rawls? How do I do this? Who do I ask? Yes. Ask the kids. Yes. Let the students lead. They will break this down to you and make it make sense. Now, I'm not saying you got to start watching Barbie. <laughs> and, and that's not even hip hop. Some people say, I can't do hip hop. I can't. That's not what we're saying. It's about using youth culture. What are they into right now? So the trick for us older folks is you got to stay in tune. Right. How do you stay yeah. in tune? Because most of us don't care about a lot of this new stuff. I mean, I, I admit it. I don't be in, I'm not watching Barbie. I'm not no. doing this stuff. But I need to know what my students are into. Right. So yeah. I, you always have a couple students in your class who are going to clue you in. I mean, that's a little that's a little bit of homework. It's a little yeah. bit of movement outside of our comfort zones. Yes, sir. Uh, a little you bit of intentional growth, right? Nail on the head. It, it is. It takes work. Let me say this. I say this in every profession, professional development I do. This takes work. It is not easy because yeah. a lot of teachers are expecting, oh, give me the easy route. Right. There's no easy route with these kids. Right. This is a new generation and they move at the speed of 
everything. I mean, they are quick. Yes. And so in order for you to stay on top of it, you're going to have to do some work. We know you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something hilarious as we wrap up and then I'm going to, I'm going to shoot it back to you to finish up. Right. I remember the first school I taught at was directly out of college and I was 23 years old mm -hmm. at 23 years old. I believed myself to have that centrality. So I'm, I'm the cool one. Cool. And yeah. then as you grow older, you're like, I'm still cool. Right. I'm still cool. Right. And if you have to question it, you definitely aren't. Because <laughs> the same thing happened. And I started teaching late. So yeah. that's I, I really realized, I think I was 26 or 27 okay. when I started teaching. And I was an old man. <laughs> Them students, they was, boop, 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 boop. they were moving fast. Yeah. But your ability to, to, to be with them uh, was enhanced uh, by this methodology. Um, they're in you're able to to replicate it and put it down and, in words and it can and it came from hip hop it it, it was me and my hip hopness right because i am hip hop i i am that is my culture yeah. and i realized like through hip hop wait a minute i've got to i've got to change this up because i used to try to be stiff don't smile to november all that stuff right, right, right. that's what i was taught like yeah. now nah, you can't go in there smiling they are going to run over you they're going to do yeah. this they're going to do that and i realized my students was like nah man we don't rock with that yeah. And, and what they did rock with was me being my authentic self. When I was who I was and showed them who I was, they was like, oh, you're pretty cool. We mess with you. Right. Instead of trying to be super hard and trying not to show any emotion, that doesn't work. You know, the kid and the kids, will they'll eat you up because they, they can smell a, a fake quick. Yeah. Yes. They can they can figure out if you're being phony. If you're not being who you are, they don't mess with you. So I think I think those are those are wonderful final thoughts. Um, I think we've done a pretty decent job of bringing home to our practitioners the ideas and and the and the opportunities that they're going to have uh, should they take on uh, this teaching framework. Anything else before we head out? Um, you know, I appreciate. I always appreciate um, the opportunity. Uh, I do want to say if anybody is interested in finding out more, um, it's Jr dot com so okay. i-t-s-j-a-y-a-r-e dot com hit us up um you can email us every all our contact information is there um we also have a music component because john and i um we're a group we okay. we do music we've been uh putting albums out since 2009 so um we've got some 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 uh music we got an album for teachers also called youth culture power very cool yeah and that uh, it, every chapter of the book is a song title. And so we break down the chapters in the book through the music. So if you want to hear it that way, right? Yeah. Uh, Gardner's multiple uh, intelligences, sure. you know, some different ways for you to, for you to take it in. But this is all for the teachers because we're, we don't need to teach the students how to, how to act, right? They are who they are. Yeah. We've got to teach the teachers how to be able to work with these students. And that's what we try to give you. Listen, I'm going to slip money out of there and say education, power, respect, and, and, and say thank you very much. Uh, you, you are absolutely a visionary, and I really do think uh, your, your message is an important one to our, to our practitioners. So thank you for sharing it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. And uh, man, y'all have a good day. Definitely. You too, bro. You too. Thanks. Take care. Peace.